And welcome in to a hump day edition of the Backstage Pass, almost there toward the TGIF. And of course, uh, a little weekend getaway that we'll take this weekend coming up, uh, flying to Arizona to check out the Arizona Cardinals football game. And then, of course, come back, resume some shows next week, uh, probably Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, so taking that time off, it's getting close to the holidays, but always good to be with you guys out there in podcast land. Uh, Brandon Morrell and Jeff McMahon back here on the platform, uh, presented by our good friends over at Bang Till Whiskey. And I tell you what, uh, she loves whiskey. She's got her own brand of coffee that's doing well out there and always stand behind her. And uh, this lady's worked hard. She knows the meaning of hard work, and it's led to the debut album, Red Lights Turning Green, uh, show favorite Claudia Heuser back here on the program. How you doing? Woohoo! Doing great. Thank you for uh, the long, lovely intro. You absolutely killed it. No, it's so good to be back and just, you know, it's like talking to old friends and it feels really good to finally be uh, catching back up with you. Well, it's great to catch up with you. Congratulations on the debut album, which is out there for your streaming, uh, I guess, touch, feel, and listening pleasure out there, too, as well. Make sure you get that across all the platforms if you don't have it already. So let's kind of catch up here at the top. I mean, this thing has been in the works. I know the last few episodes we did, you talked about this, the selection of songs, uh, putting this together. Uh, seems like I'm sure it's a relief now that it's out and uh, doing real well out there for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, it's been uh it's definitely been quite the journey working on this album. You've heard me talking about it um, the last few times that we uh, that we spoke. I was, yeah, definitely in it, in the thick of it. It took <laughs> what I thought was going to be, you know, a year to finish, and it turned out to be like four and a half. So the fact that it's out there now and I'm actually getting to hear people's like reactions and mm -hmm. seeing them listening and picking favorites on the album, it's been so, so cool. And yes, definitely such a relief. Um, and we're just about to release our first single off the new album. So Ooh. very excited about that, too. I like that, too. She's got a couple of songs we're going to perform today. So tell me about, uh, I guess, the song selection, the writing. Uh, great team you got to work with on, on putting this out. And like you said, like kind of years in the making here. But a lot of uh, great songs really showcase your voice, showcase the stories behind the songs. Uh, kind of dive into that a little bit for me, the selection of songs and, of course, the writing behind this album. Yeah, that was the biggest part for us. Just after going after this for such a long time, it really became, we went over all those hurdles. Like, do we try to write, you know, more so tuned towards things that are on country radio so that we think it'll be a popular song? Or do we kind of stick to what we, what we felt was us and our roots. And when I say us, my co-writer and I, we wrote over 200 songs for wow. this album. And it got to the point where, you know, we just kept writing and writing and writing. And the ones that seemed to rise to the top were those story driven songs and everything became about the lyrics and the story had to make sense in order to feel like we were connecting to it enough to put the extra time in. And why did that song deserve all the time um, over the rest of the 200 we had? And it just became about those stories for us. And I think that people are finding those, um, you know, they're connecting to them. And I'm, mm -hmm. it's one thing I'm really happy we didn't change our path. We stuck to what we thought felt right. And now we're getting to see other people connecting to those stories. And so, um, yeah, like I'll give you the example of uh, the single that's going to be coming out. It's called Wicked. Mm -hmm. And it's just about a wicked heartbreak. It's something everybody, unfortunately, has gone through sometimes one too many times. and. I think that people just, they know, they know what you're talking about and they can feel it in the song. And uh, so this is one that everybody seems to connect with. I didn't think that anybody was going to love this song right off the bat. I thought it was a little bit slower, a little bit sad. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. okay, people want that fun radio hit, but I don't care. We're going to put it out and we're going to hope <laughs> for the best. And this has turned out to be everybody's favorite so far. So wicked has been, has been the one that's been rising, uh, among the others so well and and when you have 200 songs you know you you talked about uh those few songs that kind of rose to the top how did you determine that they were the ones rising to the top what were you using as a measuring stick beyond just the conversations between you and your co-writer yeah i think one thing we had to our advantage since we did spend so much time on this album was that i actually got to go out and perform a lot of these songs and I could kind of feel which ones were 
creating some buzz and some crowd reaction. And I could see which ones that our loyal followers were picking up on and starting to learn the words. Um, and that meant a lot, but there's definitely a couple on this album that maybe we didn't play for everybody and we held them back a little bit just because we felt like they were something special and we were going to put them out no matter what. But right. getting a little bit of crowd reaction definitely helped us pick and uh, we had some radio friends of ours. Uh, we sent out a couple songs to some radio friends. Just, hey, what do you think of these top five? You know, do you have a favorite? And just kind of gauging some interest and seeing what people were liking. And then at the end of the day, it was really cool to just kind of sit back and pick what what mm -hmm. we felt was right. There's nothing on this album that I didn't believe in like wholeheartedly. So right. it feels really good to be be able to say that and to be able to say we wrote the whole thing. Well, and so so I want to ask you of the songs that that you knew you had the most audience feedback from uh, people that aren't performers, they don't understand how much weight that can carry yeah. because because the radio guys or the, your family or whoever, they don't get it. And you're trying to say, no, 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 you don't understand. I was on stage. I was I watched this happen. I watched this happen. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was on the road for a long time, uh, working with an artist who did not record that song on his first album and it didn't happen. And on the second album, it was like, I know everybody's against us, but the audience gets it. And that yeah. was his big breakout. Yeah. So which, which song is that for you that, you know, it's going to be there because the audience told you. Hmm. I think well, definitely the first single. I, I yeah. just, it really mm -hmm. is. It's the single for me because um, that was one we actually kind of held back. I didn't go out and play it all the time. This was one that I felt was a little bit of a deeper cut. And um, there were just a certain few circumstances where we did play it out. And my sister actually was <clears> the <throat> one that was like, you better finish that song. And I'm like, nobody's going to like it. It's slow. It's sad. She's like, that's mm -hmm. the one everyone's going to love. And then um, definitely radio became a big, uh, a big, true, a big uh, cheerleader of that one, mm -hmm. too. And yeah. I just kind of I kind of felt like even without having going out and played the song a whole bunch, there was people asking me about it somehow. They had right. heard about the song. They caught wind of what I was writing about. Um, and it just had this little magic about it. So. I'm excited to watch it fly. And we even released some lyric videos. And this one, I didn't give it any special attention. I just put them all out there like one week at a time. And this one by far has the most views so far. And I think this one's just that song for everybody because it's so relatable. Awesome. And that's what Robert was saying here about it too. Go to the audience here. Yep. It's one of his favorites there too. At the same time, he <laughs> says, you know what? He says, try to try. So I'll tell try you what, to try. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about that one here in just a little bit too. But I'd say time to do a little performing here on the show. She does it, uh, like I said, better than, than most out there, but she's good at it. And that's why she does a lot of gigs and she's built that social media following for the past few years. So let's have you play one off the album, one of two today. And, Again, it's Red Lights Turning Green out there across all the digital platforms and ClaudiaHoyser.com. You can also go there and get the best coffee. She knows I'm going to stand behind that too out there. We'll oh, yeah. talk more about that and get a coffee update. Last time we did a little promo on there with Backstage Pass, so hopefully we can uh, do something like that again. But it's always fun to go there and, and support uh, just a, a damn good brand of coffee and a blend that I tell you what is so smooth, it's going to stick right to the lips and right down the, the, the throat out there too. So I love it that much. Uh, again, uh, the floor is all yours, my friend. Take it away. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm excited to get to play. I feel like it's been a, it's been a hot minute. Um, so I'm going to do a song that's actually the first song on the album. So uh, if anybody actually has a CD player out there, you go pop this one in your car, and this is the first tune you'll hear. Um, and we just released the lyric video for it on Monday. So uh, I want to play you a special one called Curtains. There we go. Thrown in the towel. 
Shutting out the lights Even cut out the sound Could have just gone to sleep Tail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle, and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. 
Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. And we're doing that now. Claudia Hoiser back here on the program. Check her out at the website. And, of course, go get you some coffee while you're there, too. I could use me a cup, too. I think this <laughs> kid's been running me ragged over the past few days. I've been pulling, like, the morning duty normally that Mama does, but I've been having to get her up early. And, man, I need to get me another bag. I may place an order after we're, we're done here. Just <laughs> go to Hoys- uh, ClaudiaHoiser.com, and, and Hill Country. That Hoiser Country plan is, is – and you know what? The best thing about it, I say Hill Country because I love going up to San Antonio – but all these great mornings we've had over the past uh, two or three weekends of the get up is like 50 outside, 55, 60, just step on your back porch and uh, drink, drink you a cup of that. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it's out there too. We're talking about red lights turning green, the latest album out there. Uh, I, I thought that song, and I was going to ask you about that before we talked about wicked there at the top, that really kind of set the tone for the rest of what you're doing and the message you're sending to your, your fans out there. And of course, fans of, of country music, I commend you on a great song and curtains really set the tone for the album. Thank you so much. That was that was a big debate for me. Like we we knew it was a little bit of a bigger song, deeper song. You know, it it might not grab everybody right off the bat. People are still going to be like, eh, I, I don't know this girl yet. Who? What is this? But I just <laughs> felt like it gave you a really good idea of like what I'm about and why this album meant so much to me. And it's like, you know what? I could have not done this a million times over and uh here we are we're still gonna we're gonna try to keep going for it and this is why and i just thought curtains kind of laid it all out Mm -hmm. there i love that tell me about the title track and where the idea behind uh that came from uh, red lights turning green red lights turning green this is a song that's been with us for a while we wrote it back in like 2016 and um it was just a song that we could not let go. I knew the minute we wrote it um, and it all came together that it was going to be the title track of my album someday when we got mm-hmm. to actually put this together. Um, but early on, we had a song kind of take off with country radio. We started, like you said, Jeff, earlier, we we went out to CRS and we started right. visiting radio stations. And one of the first things when we started visiting the stations uh, that kept coming up from DJs and uh, MDs and all that, they were like, well, if you're going to come visit us, do you have a CD? And we're like, uh, no, we didn't expect to have anything with radio yet. It's amazing. We're going to ride it, but um, we weren't totally ready. So we are kind of playing catch up and they were like, well, if you're going to come visit our town and you're going to come play for our radio station and we'd really love you to have something to offer to our listeners. If you want to throw together a, a CD or something, I'm like, Oh my God. Okay. So we put a couple of our closest finished songs uh, together for an EP back in 2017 and red lights. The title track was actually on this EP, but we didn't get to like really finish it the way it deserved to be handled. You know, it, it wasn't totally coming alive yet in the studio. And my voice was like growing over the years and I was figuring out my sound. Um, So red lights is one that we got to go back to, and really bring out you know all the special stuff for it just kind of add in those little subtle hints of mandolin and um, replace some pedal steel where it needed a little bit more opening and I think that song it's just all about moving forward putting the hard stuff behind you Um, after the few years we've been through now as a world um, yeah I think it's like more relatable than ever and I hope people feel that way when they hear it so I just thought, of course, this this album has to be titled after this song. And it's all about us getting through all this stuff together. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, as long as we can keep those lights turning green. Right? <laughs> yeah, let's hope, let's hope. <laughs> um, I love what, that. That's the goal, too. Hey, I love what you've done with the music series, and I follow a lot of it on Facebook, the Hoiser Country Monday. Uh, give me an update there. Uh, still going strong. I know you've been doing this for a few years now. Yeah. So Hoyser Country Monday went on for two years. Breaks my heart a little bit, but we uh-huh. put we put a pause, not okay. a total end, but a pause on Hoyser Country Monday. And uh, my followers are probably listening in like, what? You're really pausing it? Because <laughs> I think they're still hoping that every Monday it comes around, I'm going to put out a new video. But it was just time to put a little pause on all the covers and start to share my own music Mm -hmm. because that was really such a big help of us growing our following and kind of saying, Hey, 
Yeah, I'm from upstate New York, but I love country music just like you. And mm -hmm. um, my voice has a little bit of a just a. Oh, did I cut out? Sorry. Just a little bit. It's, it's got a little Rochester, New York twang to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so my followers seem to really gravitate towards it. And I was so lucky. And those those Hoyser Country Monday covers definitely gave me the confidence to really mm -hmm. dive in deeper to country music, which I loved so much. Um, so getting to explore all those classics and the greats, it was a big learning curve for me, actually. There's so much out there, guys. It's like crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. much music. So much yeah. great music. I got to ask you about uh, one of Robert's favorites there, uh, Tried to Try. I thought that was just a, a message well worth sent to. And then, of course, uh, I love that Bring on the Cold because I feel like that's the, this weather's about to change for us down here in Texas. Uh -huh. We got rid of the triple digit heat now and we're going into the 60 70 degree weather here too and so in other parts of the country but i think um just so many good songs on there like i said we're talking about the full thing today but uh tried to try what was the kind of the the, the feel behind that one yeah i think every single song on this album gives you like a little bit of a different mm -hmm. mood and a little different uh feeling like tried to try is definitely that feeling like you know what i freaking tried <laughs> <laughs> and you're tired and you're mad and you're like, I've given it everything. And whether you're talking about your job or your relationship or whatever you were trying to fix or trying to help. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just, you gave it your all and it wasn't working and you're just like done with it. So I think people get fed up sometimes and that song really captures that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I tell Jeff that every day. Sometimes, you know, I tried to do this, and it just died. Ah, just tried to try, Jeff. I just no. I tried to try. Like, come on, okay. And then you have to just set out and find find what's going to be better for you in that situation. And yeah, I think we were we were when we were writing this one, it was it was relationship based. But mm -hmm. I think you could put it to anything that you're going through. Just, yeah, I yeah. tried. <laughs> you sure can too. Again, it's red lights turning green out there across all the platforms. They go make it turn green. Put some green in the in the uh, the old good old streaming box out there. Go ahead and buy the album across all the digital uh, platforms. Hey, we'll have you play one more off of it. We'll come back and do a little rapid fire and talk about uh, a couple of more songs here presented by our good friends over at Bang Till Whiskey. It's the backstage pass, and again, the floor is all yours. So I could go a number of different directions, but. Uh, Big, and that's my whole playlist talking to me right now. She's got so many great songs out there. So <laughs> again, it's Thank all yours. You. I'm going to do the title track for you. All so right. this is that title song, uh, Red Lights Turning Green, just about putting the hard stuff behind you and moving forward. So Ooh. if anybody listens to this, loves it out there, make sure you go find it on Spotify and Apple Music. And uh, if you're listening from Hoiser Country, make sure you're following the Backstage Pass. Sports here, we guys here. here we go. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
have broken on my walls. Used the bricks to break the fall. But I stand. But you see, me. Well, I'll keep standing strong. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. And that's just like that coffee out there, too. It's uh, called bangtail whiskey, and that coffee's good out there. Make sure you get some of the Hoiser Country blend. Thank and uh, two words, ClaudiaHoiser.com. Actually, that's three words, minus the dot com. But uh, you get <laughs> the point out there. I have another one, too, Hoiser What's Country. HoiserCountry.com is going to okay. get all the merch and the there coffee. And the do that, stuff. too, while you're at it. <laughs> you throw some green at it. Get it all there. Look, Jeff and I switched sides. The, the power of technology there. Look at that. Uh, Red Lights, Dirty Green uh, is the album we're talking about there. It came out this summer and, and doing real well uh, so far. I got to ask you about this uh, because I thought this was one of the ones for me that stood out on the uh, album. Didn't do the pouring. Tell me about <laughs> this one. <laughs> Didn't do the pouring. Okay, so this is when... You know, you think you're going to have a, a chill night with your friends, but then somebody brings a bottle of wine and then one thing leads to the next and you're all out and crazy and nobody saw that coming. Um, just maybe about having one too many, but hey, I didn't do the pouring. Somebody <laughs> offered the drinks up and we went out and had a good time. So that one's just a fun kind of like a, it's like a feel good party song. So um, yeah, yeah. You might, you might find some little inside jokes in there if you read the lyrics real good. And then you have to come over to my page and tell me, tell me what you found on there. Uh, we'll, we'll do that. <laughs> Another interesting title. And I thought it was, uh, you know, it sent a good message. Uh, Duke Devlin. Tell me about this. one. Duke Devlin. Oh, now this is a good story. <laughs> this is a good story behind this song. Uh, this is a true story about the hippie who never left Woodstock. And I got a chance that we went and toured uh, the Woodstock Museum in Bethel Woods 
uh, Bethel, New York, a couple years back for a radio yeah. I- event and interview. And uh, they made us take a couple tickets over to the Woodstock Museum and check it out before we left town. And they're like, keep an eye out for Duke Devlin. And we're like, okay, who's Duke Devlin? <laughs> well, long story short, turns out he is this amazing, he's like a six foot five outlaw country Santa Claus looking man. And he's yeah. just out there ready to be everybody's friend, telling all the concerts and everything. And he just loves to share all his stories and messages and peace and love out there. So we just met him and we're like, okay, this is something special. And he needs a song because he's yeah. sitting there, you know, leaving all this for everybody else. And, you know, we just wanted to kind of give back to him a little bit. So <laughs> we wrote Duke Devlin. We got to go perform it for him and give him some lyrics. And this was one that this was one of those songs that the audience really fell in love with it, I think, because of the fact that Duke is a real person. And sure. like, you can seriously go to his Facebook page. Mm-hmm. He's always on there hanging out. We're going to see him in a couple of weeks. So we're getting ready to head back for a show in Bethel. And we're looking forward to meeting up with Duke Devlin, catching up a little bit. I like that. Great story. Uh, good friend Henry tunes in. He says, uh, any tour plans is going to bring you to Florida? Any tour Ooh. plans there? Mm. I would love to, especially though in the winter, you know, being from upstate New York, mm-hmm. I'd love to get down there. But as of right now, we don't have any plans to come to Florida. Okay. But I'm not saying it won't happen because these things come on quick and we just <laughs> pick up and go. We're headed out to Milwaukee in a couple of weeks and we just found out about some bigger shows coming up that aren't announced yet. So Ooh, keep, nice. keep tuned on my page. You might see something fun coming up in the next week or so. I love that. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Before I get to the rapid fire, uh, I got to ask you, you, you've done so much in your career. And I think, like you said, you, you took the hard route to get to where you're at now and and, and the struggles, but also, you know, you, you've built your brand, your name and your sound out there so much. What, what's that been like for you to just see that continue to grow over these last few years and to support artists out there uh, like Texas artist Miranda Lambert and uh, Chase Rice and just a whole a uh, bunch of different great musicians out there. Tell me about that as you look back and you know have a chance to reflect and, and know that this this was not easy and you had to scratch and claw and dig for everything that you've gotten. Yeah, it's it's been so DIY. It's not how I ever. First of all, I never imagined I'd be doing this. So mm-hmm. I wake up every day like a little kid on Christmas, like so lucky that I'm getting to just wake up and do what I actually love. And then when shows like. Um, the Miranda Lambert show came around. I just seriously, I cannot even believe it. I'm still Mm -hmm. trying to wake up from that and um, (laughs) to be called in to open up for Brantley Gilbert the night before. And um, it's just been absolutely crazy. I'm so thankful. And yeah, it's not, you know, when you think as a little girl, Oh, I want to be a singer someday. You don't think of how much really goes into it. And I've Mm -hmm. learned every single day. Um, so much. And I think that it almost feels more rewarding because we've done it ourselves. And now I can say like, look, we went out there, we did all those shows, we called all those radio stations, we wrote those songs, like I'm just over the moon, proud and happy. And to see people actually following along and wondering what's next and wondering where Hoiser Country Monday is. And uh, <laughs> right. we have a show called Fired Up Live, everybody's been tuning into um, once a month on Facebook. And it's just amazing. It's the greatest thing I could ever imagine. <laughs> well, and and also um, people don't think about about things like um, you get mad at your manager, so he leaves, and you realize he had everybody's phone numbers that you've worked with for the last five years. We're very you know? lucky that we've never really had it out for each other. All that, <laughs> and, well, but. Uh, well, but my point, I'm not, that's not about the manager. It's about the, the part of, of your DIY, yeah. you know, you're in touch with, with your business, you know, it's true, and, it's, it's true. and it's not as if, um, you know, I mean, I, I know if, if he left, you're still more involved in your business than a lot of people are. And, um, uh, you know, and you would, you would, you would not be in a position to be clueless, unaware I've, I've worked all this time for five years and I have no idea who helped me. 
because you know who's helped you and you know who built it because you've been involved in building it the whole time. Exactly. And my manager, you know, he had so much more experience than me. And he was <clears> like, <throat> if I'm going to do this one more time and, and try to work with an artist and really bring somebody up and whatever, it's going to be with you. And I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to do it. And he's shared every. Yeah. everything he knows with me. I mean, I'm in here learning about gear and analog equipment, uh, <laughs> everything from that to like how, um, you know, important networking is and yeah. building relationships mm -hmm. and just being there for the people that are there for you. And those are things that going into it, you don't think about, but sure. having somebody on my team that has been around the, the musical block it and been there and it's really cool to get to go through it now having him guide me and sure. learning every step of the way well and and love you tony was not busting on tony <laughs> oh no no he, he trusts me he gets it all the time but, and it's uh, good because we get to play good cop bad cop yeah, yeah, yeah. so if there's like oh there's no way i'm doing that interview he'll, he'll be the one to call yeah. you and let you yeah. know yeah. <laughs> but too. um but it, it can be something as simple as you know I, i've got a a young lady that i do some work with here in nashville and i remember my initial instinct at the first she first big opener was to go up and make sure that the monitor was set right and to, and all that. And I was like, no, 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 no. What if I'm not here? Right. You go up here. I'll, I'll stand here That's and kind awesome. of orient you. Mm -hmm. But uh, I get hit by a bus. I don't want your career to, to <laughs> stop. So well, that means you're a good person. Cause yeah, unfortunately right. there's some people out there that wouldn't feel the same way, but I've been yeah. very, very lucky. And yeah. Um, so yeah, if there's any artists actually paying attention or somebody who's, looking to do this from the ground up, just pay attention because yeah. there's so many people you can learn from. You just have to watch. Yeah. Yep. So I have to ask you, love all the new stuff. Thank you. I do want to ask you about the covers mm -hmm. uh, because you've so many people don't understand the importance of using cover songs as a way to figure out, what you like, what you don't like, what pieces of the past you want to carry forward, how you're going to make things your own and how to reinvent a cover. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you did um, was, you know, and it, it's not necessarily a famous cover, but you had the opportunity to record um, this time tomorrow for the cancer uh, for the cancer awareness program yes. with Jada Marcus from mm -hmm. Rascal Flats. Mm -hmm. um, and see Thomas Howell, the actor. Oh, no kidding. Oh, yeah. He's showing his pipes nowadays, and he's on that tune, too. And it was I, amazing to get to work with these guys. I, well, I saw Tommy Howell, but I and I, I was thinking, should I know who <laughs> Tommy Howell is? Who is that? <laughs> see Thomas Howell, the actor. Yes. Which, you know, who a lot of people uh, would remember as uh, drinking the deer blood from uh, Red Dawn, I believe, mm -hmm. was C. Thomas Howell. <laughs> yep, um, yep. Did not recognize him in the video, so now I have to go back and look at it again. Oh, yeah. Um, but that song had been recorded 11 times before you did it, so you're there to, again, reinvent something that has been done before. Talk a little bit about whether it's all the covers that you've used to build your audience so tremendously, or that cover that that enabled you to work with Jay DeMarcus, yeah. who's worked with Chicago and of course, Rascal Flats and, and yeah. all of that. Well, I think, yeah, I would love to talk about this a little bit because we're actually getting ready to go back. That's why I'm going to Milwaukee. We're going to be doing the gala again this year for this time tomorrow foundation. Got it. And um, yes, like you said, the song had been recorded and performed 11 times and it was actually put into retirement. They retired the song because they were like, okay, what else could possibly be done with this one? It's been done so many times, so beautifully. Maybe it's time we find a new song. But when we heard about this situation and we were introduced to the gala, Tony and I were like, oh, I don't know, maybe we should take a crack at it and just see what we could do with it. <laughs> and we kind of fell in love with this idea of reworking a song that had already been done. It was just like, in a way, Boys Are Country Monday. But mm -hmm. this one being involved with the Cancer Foundation, it was so special. We're like, I think we could come up with something pretty beautiful here. So, um, yep, Jay DeMarcus and Tommy Howell, they were 
um, big parts of the foundation and the gala, and they've been doing this for years. So it was so special to be able to have them on the song or to be on the song with them, I guess. But we wrote this version and um, Corey Zimmerman is actually the original writer of This Time Tomorrow. And he wrote it for a dear friend of his. And so, yeah, we got to go down to the studio in Nashville and work with some of the guys from Rascal Flats. And they came in and um, there were some incredibly talented musicians on that track. And just getting to record the Nashville way it was a first time for me and yeah. a little a little different than I was used to. But just getting to be there with uh, some of these amazing people and, you know people I've listened to for years and years and watched in movies. And then all of a sudden we're singing together. I think yeah. being able to turn something into your own is kind of, um, it did help me figure out what sound I wanted to have on my album. We definitely yeah. figured out from doing these classic country covers that we wanted to keep everything really organic. And yeah. I wanted whatever people heard on the album them to be able to come out and see us live and hear it on a stage. That was something right. like during the process of doing all the classic country songs, I'm like, this is what I want you to walk in the studio and hear us doing it and then listen to it in your car and hear the same thing. Yeah. So yeah, it's super important to be able to turn it into your own. And that's what gives you your own little fingerprint sound. And um, I have a lot of fun doing that. You know, that is so funny when you say, when you talk about going through that process to realize that you wanted this organic sound because when when i listen to no matters what it costs right mm -hmm. which i i think was the first release it was it was definitely early yes um and you i heard you make a comment about how that song somebody thought that song might do well with country radio yeah because it was like super raw and not dialed up it was right. just like a couple tracks and it wasn't even really finished. And um, a DJ kind of took it under his wing and was like, I'm going to play this thing. I think it's great. Right. Right. And, and in a lot of ways it felt very reminiscent to the Cheryl Crow record that came out three years earlier, which was her first attempt at a Nashville record, which was again, the more organic, moving slightly away from the pop side, more to the country thing. Mm -hmm. All of that, just to say, I heard that song from 2016 and, you know, and thought, Oh, that's really cool that she's choosing this really organic, open, raw, <clears throat> not wanting to get overproduced thing. And you're saying, yeah, we kind of learned that over the last five years. I'm like, shoot, call me. I could have told you you were already doing that in 2016. <laughs> yeah, I think I think no matter what it costs was a big uh, part of that, too, just because it, it was so natural and raw and kind of like a little bit grungy in comparison to what was out on country pop yeah. radio at the time and still. And um, yeah, we definitely were like, okay, this is a track we could go on and maybe we stay here and then started to do the covers and everything. It definitely locked it in. Like, yes, I yeah. couldn't just throw on a track right now and just start, you know, singing over some pop thing. It just, it wouldn't right. feel as connected as I do to our music now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and to your credit, I think what's great about looking at, at, your journey kind of musically is that you say you went through that to kind of find your sound, but I really think you just kind of sharpened it. I mean, you, you knew what you were headed. I mean, you still wound up in the direction that you're headed, but you've still been able to refine it as opposed to start from scratch and wonder, what do I really want to do? You yeah. know, yeah. And that's the way Thank it appears you. from the outside. I, don't oh, know. I love that. I think <laughs> I think that's something that definitely happened over time. We call it like woodshedding here in the yeah. studio. And it was just like, how, you know, can I be more me? Like I have mm -hmm. this, but what's going to be more that? Yeah. And just figuring out what that was. So yeah. that was definitely part of the process for sure. Well, and you know, I've always said to you have that Nashville sound. I mean, like I said, that's not even a discussion. We need to, to get into that. She just has that sound. And I go back with tunes, even like Jeff said, no matter what it costs, but also drinking with the boys that she knew was one of my favorites when it first came out there back in 2017. And then we did um, a show back in 2019 when I first started doing this show. 
uh, I was a huge fan of Call It Out. So, you know, all those songs that you were working so hard at the beginning to to perfect that sound, uh, you, you've definitely done that with this album. I'm going to say it again. It's it's a uh, fantastic piece of work. And it's just awesome to, to see you grow and us grow uh, with you into Red Lights Turning Green. That's why we definitely um, had to have you back to discuss those 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 different points and see how far you've come. No no doubt. Um, hey, a little rapid fire here. So I changed a few things. Let's 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 dive into this a little bit. Um, you can be on any game show out there. What oh, what game no. show are you choosing? Zero, none. I think it's like one of my biggest fears. <laughs> I'm terrified that somebody is going to bring me onto a game show someday because I would just be so bad, like embarrassingly bad. I couldn't even tell you once. Jeopardy. Jeopardy? Absolutely not. <laughs> That's the last. It's the worst of the worst. <laughs> oh, like that. Maybe, maybe uh, if this is the last year for Aaron Rodgers, maybe he becomes the the permanent host of, of Jeopardy, the Green Bay Packers quarterback. So you could uh, definitely appear on there. That'd be, that'd be a good thing too. All right, uh, it would just be a disaster. You, you, <laughs> well, he could become your own concert, yeah. uh, Jeopardy with the Claudia Hoyser concert, oh, no. and get you a cup of Hill Country Blend while you're at it too. I love that. So there you go. <laughs> Yeah, Jan, I guess I, I I was laughing there, too. Jan tunes in from Australia all the way over there. I guess I didn't expect her to have a game show there, too. But it was worth asking. All right. Yeah, we, I know the beverage side of things. We know the beverage side of things is coffee. So I know if you could be a drink, you'd probably be your own brand of coffee. If you could be any food out there, what food would you pick? Mm, this is really tricky. Any food. If I could be a food, chocolate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chocolate. <laughs> any form, any like brownie, chocolate sundae, um, actual chocolate bar, any kind. Okay, I like that. Um, let's see. Last song that you purchased on iTunes, a single, an album, who were you listening to? What's the last thing on your playlist? Oh, my gosh. Probably Miranda Lambert, anything Miranda. Um, I'm always listening to her, always trying to find out. Like She just put out this new album with a couple of her favorite writers, and she did like this really stripped-down marfa tapes album and i oh, just yeah. loved it she left mm -hmm. it like messy and there's you know they were cracking up in the background and you could hear all the papers rustling around so i definitely have been listening to that because i just love hearing the realness of it all i like that okay see i love that she's and she's very real and raw in the music too she puts out too there you go all right uh pizza question love this one um pizza. last pizza you ordered what toppings went on it it was Probably have been sausage and onion. <laughs> <laughs> Two of my favorites. See, we all the time would ask people what's their favorite pizza or what toppings go on it. And Jeff and I can't have a slice. I'd probably put my hand over there and she'd knock it away and be like, that's two of my favorites on. <laughs> it's so pizza. good. I love pizza. You can put anything on the pizza. Except I don't know how I feel about like the whole ranch and pineapple thing. Mm -hmm. Have you guys had that? Mm -mm. I'm not a, the ranch I'm okay with. The pineapple I'm just not. I know. Just, I'm like, no. I, I just, if mm -mm. you're diving into pizza, you're not thinking fruit, Yeah, you know, <laughs> like save that for the next day when you're feeling right. guilty about the pizza. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Halloween's coming up. Any plans? Uh, and if you are watching a movie, what are you watching? Any of the old classics? Oh, of course. I, I get way too spooked, way too easy. So um, it could be like something as simple as like Halloween Town. I'm like, oh, this is good enough for me. <laughs> something kind of cute. Um, no, my sister's really, really into the horror films. So I'm sure mm -hmm. she'll have some recommendations for me. Well, the I have one for you here. The I saw it last week when it came out on the um, streaming, the Peacock service, uh, Halloween Kills, the, the latest one with Jamie Lee Curtis. Mm. I'm going to give it a thumbs up to hit on some old stuff and, and not to ruin it for anybody. But uh, if you're not going to go to the theater, stream it on Peacock because it, it was good. I'm going to nice. be honest with you. So. I'll take uh, that and, and gory. If you like gory movies. And, and I'll say this. Look, I was a Rob Zombie fan when he put out his versions of it. That's a different story of it, too. I still like those. But this was more kind of um, back on the basic level of the way people know how Halloween growing up with the whole Mike Meyer story and all that kind of stuff. So I, you know, nice. that, and then I found myself doing Friday the 13th because okay. of Jason Voorhees. You got to love the, the classic stuff there with Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. Can't go wrong <laughs> yes. with, with Freddy Krueger. So mm -hmm. I was, I, I know T Tony and I were talking horror movies the other day. We were <laughs> messing around about Halloween coming out some stuff like that. And I forget what he had told me his, uh, his, his favorite was there, but <laughs> I still don't know what I'm going to be. So I'm taking costume suggestions too mm. out there. Everybody comment away. Cause I'm looking for my costume. 
Yeah, my we we bought two for my daughter. It's either Elmo or that Australian dog cartoon Bluey. You see, oh. you've seen that's so yeah. they've that's that's her. Uh, Maybe choice. I'll go We're, with Elmo this year. <laughs> probably have to. Like, we, we went to Spirit Halloween the other day, the big store, and she grabs these two bags, and I'm like, "Which one do you want?" She just kept dragging them by the hangers on the floor, Shh, scratching. I'm like, "We'll get them both." Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> I saw a uh, I saw a kid on Instagram the other day that had chosen his own costume and he was two or three years old and he went as pants <laughs> <laughs> and he was just he was up to his neck pants. in blue jeans oh. with a belt around his neck and his oh, arms wow. went out the pockets. Wow! Oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> he was pants. <laughs> That's it was so pretty great. awesome. Probably That's some of the most creative costumes we could think of would come from kids' yeah. suggestions. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I should I should put that out there. All right, all right. Last one I got for you because I love doing this one. Uh, favorite uh, movie of all time, and then a kind of second part of it. Favorite flavor of ice cream. Hmm. Okay. The movie thing is really hard because I feel like I'm always amused and impressed with every movie I watch. Like I get really into them. So I, I love movies. Um, it's hard. Big fan of Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. Actually, yeah. you know, it's just so good the whole mm -hmm. time. It's so good. And favorite ice cream flavor would be like the darkest chocolate you could ever find. <laughs> it's actually, it's called white lightning. It's dark chocolate Ooh. with like a little mint streak in there. Yeah. So Ooh, good. So man. so good. It's my favorite right. ever. With chocolate and sprinkles. What brand makes sauce. it? What what brand is there? You know, I don't know. It's like a little local um it was a local ice cream shop we had here um growing up in my town called Fairport. Mm -hmm. And um it actually the store closed and I was freaking out because I'm like, you're the only one that has my favorite ice cream. I need to know it's going to be carried on. And they carried it on. So when it reopened as a different um, ice cream store, uh, they kept it going. So I'll have to find out who the actual maker of it is. But if you Google it, it will come up. It's called White Lightning. White Lightning. Yeah, I tell you what, that makes me think about a kid who loved the ice cream trucks growing by. And I'm sure I told Jeff this one time. I said, you know, I miss the old Grizzly bar. The old just Nestle Crunch kind of thing with the chocolate mm -hmm. inside of it. And Grizzly Bar was, was one of my favorites, too. Do you remember well, Taco what, Tacos? I meant, no. I, oh, I it not. was like a walking taco with a country shell. It looked like a taco, <laughs> but it was actually ice cream with all the stuff on the top. And it was so good. I mean, that's an ice cream. See a sweet treat tonight because Halloween is coming up and we're doing all these <laughs> events and candy stuff. And I will be out in Arizona this weekend, so I'll probably find me a little sweet treat out there when it comes to at the ball game. Jeff, I get an ice cream all that you don't want to get. There's always flavors everywhere that uh, Hey, there is nothing I would want more than to be driving <laughs> driving the ice cream truck through your neighborhood. <laughs> just just so so I could I could Keep going just a little bit. Drive a little slow just to watch you chase the truck. That's that's what I want to do. I bet he, he you better get video of that if it ever happens. Okay, I want to see. Yep, yep. And yep. she would put that on her. Yeah, she would. She put oh, that yeah. on her stuff. I that's tell you, going uh, out there. that's going to be the next toys of country Monday. Yeah, Brandon chasing the ice cream truck. Brandon chasing the ice cream truck. I tell you what. Uh, I tell you what. I'm going to chase is this album more and more, and, and just keep playing it. Uh, red lights turning green. Uh, if you had gotten to get it out there across all the platforms, uh, you know, you're always welcome back here on this platform. Uh, you've done so much for me and I just want to keep, keep doing so much for you. Hey, continued success going forward. Uh, the hard work has paid off and you know, you contact me anytime uh, new projects are coming out. Thanks for being a fan and always thanks for being on. We appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so, so much, you guys. This was great. I can't wait to have more <laughs> to share with you soon and uh, keep drinking that coffee and we'll get back in touch soon. Get, get those orders in. Uh, Claudia Hoiser, one of a kind out there too. Tomorrow, uh, Dwayne Gibson going to stop by. We'll do a little, uh, a little something different. We're going to talk a little rap music tomorrow. We don't usually do that on the backstage pass, but tomorrow we get to do a little different side of things. And of course, the uh, next couple of weeks, Steve Warner and uh, a whole lot more coming, coming up here. Jacob Bryant next week on the backstage pass. Looking forward to that. And uh, thanks to Banktail Whiskey, also a new sponsor coming up November the 1st. Excited to welcome in a new sponsor to the uh, Backstage Pass as well. If you missed anything, uh, we'll be sure and share it out later. Until then, have a great Halloween and a, a terrific night. We'll see you soon.